I'm just at the apiary for the first time this uh, season, and I'm just going to give the hives a little bit of pollen patty and some oxysol. I'm just going to go around and have a look. I did notice last year that the hives that I wrapped in the bee drive came out of winter a little stronger, larger clusters. Uh, they were covering more frames of bees. So I'm just going to go around and compare and see if I think the same thing this year between the Hogan wrap and the bee dry. Uh, I also have one that didn't get wrapped in the fall, so we'll just see what they look like. So it looks like there's about five good frames of bees in the center. And they still have some capped honey in there as well. I'm just going to move on to the second hive here. It's wrapped in a uh, bee dry. So let's get this switched around here. I also got the smoker. I just like to move the bees out of the way uh, to put that oxysol on top. So there's about four, five frames of bees on this one here. Not as big of a cluster as I would have expected to see, uh, but I'm okay with that. Lots of capped honey still in this top box.
just in case you're watching this video in the fall, uh, you'll notice that I do put um, a folded up couple layers of burlap on top of a feeder hole. Uh, I find that that absorbs quite a lot of moisture uh, through the winter, so that's what I do. So this third hive that I've opened here, um, it's probably got like eight frames of bees on top. Now that's really what I like to see coming into spring. Um, I'm gonna make a note of that um, as potentially one of my breeders for this year, just because it is such a good spring buildup. So here we have it. This is the third hive I've opened. This is a pretty good site for uh, the last bit of March here in Ontario. Still lots of capped honey in the tops of these frames too. There's a nice wet spot on this piece of burlap. Let's flip it over just in case we have any more cool nights. Here we are finally getting to uh, one of the colonies that's wrapped in the Hogan wrap. So this is a double colony. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We've got about eight frames of bees here. This is looking pretty good. There's actually some pollen on that bee there as well. I didn't think we had any pollen, uh, natural pollen just yet. Just using just a little bit of smoke there just to get the bees to move down just so they're not on the top bars there. This is another one in the bee dry. Uh, this top box is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe nine frames of bees. This one's really looking quite good as well.
So for some reason in the fall, this colony didn't get any burlap on the top of the hive. So there was no, uh, nothing absorbing the moisture at all on this, these guys. Here's another really strong looking colony. I don't know, there's seven or eight frames of bees. I'm really happy with that. This uh, outer cover is very heavy. It's quite saturated with moisture from over the winter. Uh, as I mentioned previously, uh, I didn't put any sort of moisture barrier on top of this one. Uh, somehow that got skipped in the fall. But the inner cover weighs probably twice as much as it should weigh. Here's one last double with the Hogan wrap I'm gonna peek on. As I was saying earlier that I do use burlap, I'm not sure if you can tell, but this one's really saturated. It's absorbed quite a lot of moisture this uh, winter. Yeah, that's pretty soaked. I got about six seams of worth of bees here. All right, so that uh, wraps up my first day of 2021 back in the apiary. Uh, this year I couldn't really see a clear winner between the two wrap styles. I did focus um, quite a lot of my breeding last season on early spring buildup, and I think that the successes I saw this year are probably related to that. Overall, I'm really happy with the success of those overwintered colonies. I think it's going to be a really good, strong breeding season, um, and I look forward to the weeks ahead.